Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike B with Bombero Bus, and today I'm going to drop the distributor into this 1800 build and then uh, show you some things about the lifters that I probably should have put in a previous video. So let's get to it. So I went straight to work, but you didn't miss much. The only thing you missed was the dropping of the two washers that go on this ledge right here. So what is on top of that ledge? Two washers. Now this is not the washer. I repeat, these are not the washers. They're, this is very much bigger than the actual ones. But What I did was take the two washers, put a little bit of grease on them, and then inserted this uh, chopstick down into that hole and let it rest like that. Let's see if I can get you a view. There you go. So you see those washers? I dropped them on top of this stick, shook it around, and let them go till they bottomed out down there on that ledge. So those two washers are in. So now I got to get the distributor drive gear on there. That's the last thing out of that empty kit that we used, which has come in pretty handy so far. So a couple of particular things about the way this needs to go. And I should mention that this doesn't have to be done right now. This engine can be put together with the case closed and then you can drop the uh, drive gear in when it's all said and done. So the sketchy thing that everybody knows about uh, installing these distributors is the critical part of being on number one, top dead center. And the rods go three, one, four, two. So here's our number one rod. And it needs to be at top dead center. So if you imagined dropping this crank in here, this is the rods that you hold, the one and the two. And you can see that the number one rod is fully extended, representing a top dead center. So the other uh, indicator that we have is usually you can't tell because the pulley is on your engine. But if you look at the case from the front, the keyway is in the nine o'clock position. That's another indicator that you're on number one top dead center. And then I'm also using my cam lobes. If you can see, uh, neither one of these lobes are pointing up towards me. They're both pointing down-ish into the case. So here it is. And another indicator you have is, if you look at the top of this, you can see that the uh, slot on that is skewed when people like to call them, you know, half moons. And you can see that one half moon is larger than the other half. Moon. So when I drop this in, I'm going to want to have it in that general direction. So I got the small moon up to the front and I know it's going to rotate a little bit. I'm going to drop it in there. Give her a little push. See how we're looking uh, in there, see that gear dropping? So let's start pushing it in. All right. Okay, that feels fully seated. And one of the things, if you ever pull your dizzy and you wanna know if you're on top dead center, is that this slot is like perpendicular to the seam on your case. So all the indicators are there that I'm on top dead center and uh, we got full drive. Okay, so for the rest of this build, you know, we'll be moving the engine around and spinning it on the stand. So we wanna lock that uh, drive gear in that we've dropped. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the distributor in on top of it and leave it there for the duration. There's some indicators on here that are gonna help me. Remember the half moon? So I'm gonna put the small half moon to the front of the engine or the rear of the engine. And then uh, on this one, there's a notch that indicates the number one and the rotor is pointing at that. And when this gets in, it'll be clocked in about the five o'clock position. So 
that's a good position for it. Now let's try our luck at uh, getting this dropped. And I'm telling you, words cannot describe the amount of frustration that this has provided me in the past. And it's just a slow process of pressure and twisting and cussing. Which I'll try not to do. All right, so that's where we are so far. And, you know, I should mention that there's an anti-chatter spring that you didn't see me put in there yet, and it's because I haven't. I'm gonna wait until I put the real dizzy that I'm gonna use in there, and then, you know, you put the anti-chatter spring in there on top of your distributor drive here before you drop this distributor. But uh, I started pushing, and uh, it took so long. But I'm gonna show you what I did with the empty uh, electronic one that I put in my other engine. And all it is is these O-rings around the shaft of this distributor are not friendly. They got a job to do and they're preventing oil from coming up and out of your case. So it's a very tight fit. And you can only push this in so far before you have to pull out some of your more advanced tools because I did have a couple of people in the comments ask me, how did I get that uh, empty distributor in there? Because it's a chore. And then the final test that makes us feel all warm and snugly is that we can see the dizzy is completely seated. Sometimes that can be a problem. So you want to make sure this dizzy is bottomed down on top of the clamp and everything there is seated and as flat as you can get. You see our, uh, this is on the 009, our indicator notch for number one, top dead center, and the rotor is lined up with it. And another test is that this rotor will not spool around in either direction. See how it's locked in there? And if I take the light, we can check right there and see that it is fully seated. And if you're able to uh, see on top of that ledge, the gear of it is resting on top of it. And then I'll just do it by the pulley. When we turn it, see the, the rotor cap is turning. So I'm gonna go with that and now I'll uh, move on and talk about the uh, lifters that are in there. Okay, the thing I'm gonna look at here is that uh, cam lobe to lifter clearance and you know using the gauges I've got 50 thousandths 50 thousandths under there so I'm going to check this one next and that one is 50 thousandths also which from what I gather is a pretty good cam lobe to lift your clearance, but here's why those two coming out the same surprised me. You look at the top of those lifters. The one on the left is the stock VW lifter. The one on the right is not. And you can definitely tell a thickness difference between the head on both of those. But it's an illusion of sorts because, well, let me just show you why I would two out of the box. Okay, here's those two same exact lifters. The one on the left is the stock VW. The one on the right is this uh, Rio. And they came from CB, but it's not like they're made by CB, so... I think those are some Brazilian lifters uh, and there's some differences and it's right here on the ledge you can see this VW one comes up and flattens out it's thicker here comes up and flattens out this one appears to be thinner here and it rounds making you think well that might drive itself into the lifter bore and maybe Waller it out, 
But what happens is there's a little curve here and then it does flatten out at the last minute. So the actual thickness from here to here is the same as from here to here. It just kind of has an illusion to it. But it is a difference that catches the eye. So the other things to look at are the bands. I like where they're at. They, they seem to be just as wide as the VW one and in the same place as the VW one. The gap between them is the same. Uh, the hole looks a little bit smaller, but that's probably just from time and use. But the biggest difference that I could see is, uh, let's look at this VW one. See how it's rounded in there? Looks like it's ready to, you know, receive the, the shape of the rounded push rod tip. And then this one, yeah, I mean, it's rounded, but if your push rod, if my push rod tip is wider than that cup. I don't know. I guess it could, you know, misshape it. But, man, I don't know. I've uh, never ran anything but the stock VW lifters. There it is again. So, I don't know. I've got to get some push rods and, you know, rest them in there and just kind of see how they sit in there. That's the Brazilian one. But... You know, I'll check the tips. I'm going to run them. And then I'll just check the tips of the push rods as I break the engine in and go from there. But there's some differences between uh, the aftermarket Brazilian lifters and the stock VW one. So if anybody knows about those or has experience with them and can tell me if that's a big deal or not, that'd be cool. But either way, that's what's going in there. So. If they're no good, I guess I'll find out the hard way. Okay, so that's it. Pretty much uh, at a standstill. Until I get my heads in, I'll find some other things to mess around with until then, though. So thanks for checking it out, and we'll see you on the next one.